Hey everyone, it's me, Empress Arcana, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Hi guys. Okay, so I decided to do a talk because there's so much that has happened in my life, and uh, it's been a lot. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. I've had a lot of things happen, and to the people around me, um, some stuff happened to my, to some of my close friends. Everyone's going through some stuff, and she told me, as she was updating me, she's like, I just wanted to hear your voice. You always ground me. Your voice does this for me. You help ground me. And I go, thank you for that. And I told myself, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do a talk. <laughs> I've been told this a lot, and it really helps. Um, it really makes me happy that my voice can do something like that for someone else. I'm very happy that I can soothe, ground, bring clarity, however it might be. I'm glad I can help. Have I been going through my own you know, things, uh, you know, but I had a big revelation earlier today and I'll get to that. I'll make my way to that because I am now currently in the room that I'll be staying in for the duration. It is a big mess, let me tell you, but my bed is clean <laughs> and I will tackle the rest at another point in time. Um, Today was very stressful, so was the day before, and they, you know, it's been a stressful time. Um, but I have a couple of funny stories to share, and some serious ones, too. So, sit down and listen, drink your favorite drink, whatever it is, and hopefully this will be a good time. <laughs> Um, I always appreciate you guys for listening to my talks, for listening to me on my journey. And when you guys message me and tell me how I can encourage you to keep going, thank you. Or a reminder for me to keep going when I am at my lowest. It means a lot. I've had to really learn some tough lessons in matters of the heart. And how I stand as a human being, what are my boundaries, what I won't tolerate. I've been learning a lot. And I don't find it a coincidence that we have two full Capricorn, or we already had one full Capricorn. I mean, one full Capricorn, that sounds so funny. One full moon Capricorn, excuse me. And now we have another one that will be bleeding into Aquarius. And it will be conjunct Pluto. So I can't wait to get the ball rolling again once I have everything organized. And, and it's moving fast, guys. It's moving fast. And I'm very excited to be opening up to new adventures in my life. I'm not going to hold myself back anymore because of my own limiting beliefs. Because I recognize that the only one to limit ourselves is us because once we create the limiting belief within us we limit ourselves someone can tell us something but if we agree with that belief and make it our own and create the limitation that's on us so taking full responsibility of every decision you make in life is very important <laughs> So, yes, <laughs> it has been a very rough time going back and forth, carrying crates back and forth between the acres of the property and, uh, and doing my very best to get everything here. But along the way, of course, it's um, really tough because looking through all my things, not only do I feel a kind of way with certain circumstances that I'm living through or feeling, but I also have 
the past things that are coming up that might have never been resolved and they're rearing its ugly head. The burning ritual I plan to do on the full moon, the 21st of July, I'm not going to only burn my notebooks of a, a certain period in my life. I'm going to burn them all. I'm going to burn all my photographs, everything. I want to start new. I'm going to be a new person. I'm not. I'm still me, but I want to reinvent myself. I want to soar. I already know I'm a phoenix. I rise from the ashes every damn time. This is not any different. Has it been tough? Oh, absolutely. You know, I've been trying to keep a smile on my face, but last night I didn't even take off my makeup and cried myself to sleep with it. <laughs> I mean, we all have those moments, right? Those that use makeup. <laughs> but, um, how silly of me. I felt like a little teenager crying <laughs> over a, a boy that hurt my feelings. <laughs> I feel so silly. I'm gonna, I'm an old lady, guys. I mean, I'm 38 years old and crying like that, like a teenager is not, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> it's okay to cry. I've been told by my cousin and he reminds me it's okay. You gotta let it out. Like I, I don't want to cry so much anymore. Most of my life I've cried. <laughs> it's like, but there's good moments. And I'm learning that I really got to stand in my own power. I've always wanted to, I've always felt I had to rely on another person. It's okay to rely on others. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. I'm not here trying to say, no, we can't depend on one another. No, that's what community is about. But I don't know. I believe in this lifetime because my North Node is in Aries along with my Vesta. I believe because my North Node is in Aries in the seventh house. This is a tough one for me, guys, but I'm going to share it with you. Okay. Seventh house is originally ruled by Libra. Okay. Venusian ruled Libra. My rising. <laughs> so my north node in Aries, seventh house. It is about partnerships, but the destiny point is that in order to have a balanced beautiful, harmonious relationship. I have had to put myself first and every single relationship in my life, all sorts of relationships, because that's the seventh house. Yes, it's partnerships and marriage, but the seventh house is all sorts of relationships, the balance of each of these relationships. Never once in my life have I put myself first. And Aries is about putting yourself first. I am. That is Aries. That doesn't mean to be cold, heartless. That's not it at all. But the hardest lessons in my life has been relationships. Because I always focused more on others than myself. I want to make others happy. I want to support others, especially if I love them. And I realize that, honey, you got to love yourself first. You can share that love, but you got to give love to yourself first. Fill that cup, your holy grail, your ace of cups. You know? I believe... I might not see all the lessons yet, but 
This is a big one for me. And as hard as this has been, because this all started a month and a half ago or more, almost two months at this point. I find it ironic because this all started with, I woke up one morning and something happened at my place, at my shed. And the bed, um, my, my bed wasn't working cause it's like one of those, um, um, what do they call it? I forgot the name, but yeah, you can, the bed, um, it's like one of those reclining beds or whatever. I forget what it's called, but anyway, it wasn't doing, uh, you know, the thing. And I was like, oh no, I thought the bed was broken. The, the frame or whatever, the, the motor had, you know, cause it wasn't. And that was the first, <laughs> the first of a series of events that just kept going downhill in my life. Like, um, and I mean, this whole year has been a really rough one, but so was last year. <laughs> it's been a rough time. This, um, transit with, um, Pluto and Capricorn for the last 16 years. Oh baby. It's been painful. So, um, the reason I brought up the bed is because, well, I'm not going to go discussing everything that happened, but till this point, it all started. And I go, that day I remember I said, damn it, Saturn, stop fucking me up. <laughs> oh, me blaming Saturn and me, me being in very good terms with Saturn right now. Um, Daddy Saturn. Um, I've had to learn some really rough lessons and I'm still learning. That's life. But the reason why I brought up the bed is like connecting it now and it's working. And I'm like, it's come full circle. <laughs> the bed works. <laughs> it wasn't the bed. The problem wasn't the bed. It was a whole damn shed. And I know I mentioned this before. I found that really, really funny because it's, um, I, I was lot number four and four stability and all that. Four is the emperor and tarot ruled by air. Oh my God. Ruled by Aries. My fourth house is Capricorn with my Mars and oh my God. Oh my God. I'm getting like all the synchronicities all at once. It's like, boof. <sighs> yeah, it was a rough one. Saturn, Mars, and Pluto have all been in cahoots. <laughs> God, I want to cry. It's been such a hard time, guys. And, but it's okay. I rise above it. I don't believe I would have been tested this way if I wasn't meant, if I some higher power or something didn't know I was going to be able to deal with it. Gradually, I've been learning, growing, and a lot of things still don't make sense, but a lot of things now do. What I need to focus on is on me and progressing in my career because I have a lot of beautiful ideas and I want to help so many people. And I know that along the way, everything will start to piece together because now I know more than anything what I want in my relationships. Mutual respect, communication. Definitely communication. And it's a beautiful thing. Through the pains that I've been undergoing, I'm learning what I really want in a partner. And it's still hard to say because I'm going through my own emotions and feelings. However, it played out for me. I, I recognize it all, but I know I've got this. I received a download as I was showering because I was about to cry and I realized I heard 
in my head, a voice, take that as you will, whatever. And it, they said, you are the hope for the hopeless. And I had an earlier synchronicity too. So, sorry I'm all over the place, guys. It's just that it's kind of like where I, the things I remember. But, <clears throat> so I went to a tarot conference back in 2015 with my friend. And there was a portion of one of the sessions at conferences or whatnot where um, they were handing out, like, you get to pick from a basket a random tarot card of diff all different sorts of d different decks. Guess which card I got? <laughs> I got the star. I love the star. I love the empress, I do. I love the lovers. But I got the star. My beautiful star. Ruled by Aquarius, the water bearer. Hopes and dreams is Aquarius. It's the star. And you know what's even more beautiful? And I always love to bring this up. Because in the fool's journey, hmm, The card before the star is the tower. <laughs> then comes the star of hope. I feel that I've undergone some major tower moments, the biggest of my life yet. But I feel it, guys. Things are going to get better for so many of us. I want to be the hope for the hopeless. <laughs> Even though right now I still feel a bit hopeless, I know I have hope within. I won't give up. I've come too far in my life where I used to say, no, I don't want to live. And now the reason I thought I wanted to live was taken, was shattered, however, you know. And I go, that's not the lesson, huh? That was my stomach, sorry guys. <laughs> Confirmation, grrr, you know. The real lesson here was to love so openly, so beautifully, so honestly, so effortlessly. But to also fall in love with myself. And to see the hope in my eyes. Despite everything happening around me. To look myself in the mirror. And say. You are hope. And I am. I love my name. I've mentioned it before. My name that my dad chose, because that was my grandmother's name that I never got to meet her. She died of cancer at 36. That was my mom's mom. Her name was Lucia. Lucia means light. I want to be the light. I want to be light in this world, no matter how dark. We all have darkness. I am fully aware. But there needs to be a balance between both. And in the world, we have so much chaos going on. Hmm. I've thought about this. I've actually felt that I've gone to war in my own way. I've gone to war with love. I've been fighting. This whole time I said, if I give up on this feeling or this connection, I'm giving up on myself. How ironic. In fact, <clears throat> 
Yeah. In a way it is true because I had to learn how to love with no strings attached, even if I got hurt. And I did it so beautifully. <laughs> Sorry. I am love. <laughs> And I love. And my love is beautiful. And I know, and I know with all my heart that I will be able to share this love with someone that will truly appreciate it and reciprocate it. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, enough of the sads. I cried enough today. Oh my goodness sake. <laughs> I have a funny story. It's a bit morbid though, so buckle up. Okay. As I was moving all sorts of things over here with my cousin, um, we took my mother's ashes, and I believe we put it in the truck. <laughs> oh, man. I'm here trying to organize this really messy room right now because there's a lot that I want to organize or get rid of and stuff. I've gotten rid of a lot of things, but there's still so much. But anyway, it's like, now it's midnight, but past midnight. But earlier, I go to one of my other cousins. I'm like, where is so-and-so? <laughs> I need to look in the truck. I, I think... I think I left, I think we left my mother in the truck. <laughs> oh my God. And he looks at me and I'm like, and I look at him and I go, you know what? It's late. She'll be fine in the truck. She'll be fine. I'll get her tomorrow. <laughs> my mother from wherever she's at right now is like, you left me alone in the truck? How dare you? <laughs> I need to bring them in. I need to bring those ashes in. Jesus. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> it's a little bit morbid. Sorry, guys, but it's just just me. <laughs> um, but what's the other one? Was there another funny story? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, oh yeah, but I really, I talked about it, but I still can't believe when I told my other cousin, when I told her, you know what Nanako did? <laughs> I told her that she shat all over the sex books that she gave me. And she looked at me and she's like, oh, that's what she thinks of it. I'm like, yeah, no shit. I mean, all the shit, but really. <laughs> she literally shat all over those books. She's like, you don't need this. And I'm like, excuse you. <laughs> Uh, uh, there goes the opportunity to get creative that's okay I'm very creative on my own <laughs> I don't need those books <laughs> um, either way I, I thought that was so funny I was like oh damn but yeah hmm. damn it's really been such a freaking crazy journey I wish I can say I'm happy but I'm not, guys. I'm not going to freaking lie to you. I feel so hurt by the amount of things I've undergone in the last 16 years specifically. That I just don't want to close myself off to anything in the future. Like, I'm just, my cousin asked me, he goes to me. What do you want to do for the future? What are your hopes and dreams? And I was like, oh my God, that's not a question to ask me right now. I know that after the hardships of Pluto and Capricorn, once finally Pluto stations into Aquarius, officially. <laughs> not going back into Capricorn, dipping its toes back into Capricorn. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> hmm. 
well. And he asked me, would you want a house, an apartment? What kind, What do you want? You know what's crazy, guys? I never asked myself these questions before. I never thought about myself in this life. Like, it's always been like, okay, I got to take care of my mother or I got to take care of my father. I got to take care of this person or this and that. Oh, I got to listen to this person, you know, you know, be the therapist friend. It isn't that. It's always been me putting myself second. I know a lot of us go through that, but dear God, I always felt that there was a part of me that always felt that if I didn't um, if I wasn't helping others, hmm, that's a tough one. I don't think I'm ready to talk about that one. <laughs> I'm here like, wait. <laughs> well, is my doggy making noises? My baby. I gotta take her to the vet. I hope, I hope that what she has is not what I think it is, but it's um I'll talk about it here it's I'm worried because she has a lump on one of her nipples and um it could be something um I'm hoping that if anything it's benign or it isn't something serious but it's a pretty big lump my poor baby. I know. I'm very fortunate that I've had, I mean, I still have her. Oh my God. <laughs> She's my little companion. She has not left my side since I've got, I got her. She was with me when mom died. She was with me when mom was alive for a couple of years because my mom got her two years before she passed. Nanako has been with me. It's going to be 11 years. She's been with me over a decade. She's such a beautiful girl. She is such a beautiful dog in my eyes. No one's perfect, but she is just such a beautiful girl. And I always, like... I love when animals can sync up into, I've never had a pet so synced up to me than Nanako. Such a beautiful, beautiful girl. I look at her and I just have like my heart bursts. It's just so much love that I have for that dog. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> and... Looking through pictures, looking, seeing my mother, my father. Oh my goodness, it was just, and then looking at all, all the pictures I have are mostly of so many people that have passed away already. <laughs> hmm. It's, it's crazy, guys. Life is crazy. I really do. I know I think a lot. I philosophize a lot. I feel a lot. I feel like I'm a lot. And for the longest time, I never felt that. Or I felt that I was just too much for others. But now, I'm just me. And if it's too much for someone, it's okay. They don't have to put up with me. When you care about someone, that's a different story, of course. Hmm. When you care for someone, you're there for them. You're truly there. You reach out, you talk, you deepen a bond. Hmm. Yeah, you deepen bonds. Bonds are important to me. I mean, come on, Persona 3 and 4, like, what I love about the Persona games, especially 
I know it was Persona 3. I love Persona 3. I haven't played Reload, but it doesn't matter. The story is the same, so. But hmm. you get to learn people, learn the friends that you make, your social links, if you will. Everyone has an archetype. Really, they do. It's um, it's a very insightful thing. Hmm. Goodness me. It's like I've changed so much. When I think about the things that used to put a smile on my face, I kind of like. It's so different, guys. I don't want to be. I don't want to fall into being like bitter or jaded. I'm trying. I really am. Hmm. But. Hmm. I don't know. Either way. Right now things are still a mess around here. But little by little. I'll figure myself out. I'll figure my situation out. And. I want to travel. There was a point in my life where I said, I'm going to publish books and I'm going to do book tours and I'm going to meet people all over the world. How very Sagittarius of me. I think I'll do that. I still want to. I would tell my mother, Mom, you're coming with me. She's like, but I'm sick, sweetheart. I'm, you're coming with me, Mom. <laughs> takes her ashes i'm sorry i'm sorry that's morbid ah <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i have dark humor <laughs> yeah she's in my heart she's coming with me and the day i get married she's gonna be there in my heart too it's gonna be a beautiful moment and i can't wait i deserve the love that i've always wanted for myself and for my future partner. I deserve so much more. I'm working on it. I'm working on my self-concept, which is very important. Without a proper self-concept, how can we get what we deserve, what we want, what we desire? But I don't want to blame myself. I had to learn some really tough lessons. That doesn't mean... I won't get to where I want to be. It might be a little bit darker now because I'm reevaluating what I want. What I want. What do I want? My hopes, my dreams, my desires. Hmm. For so long, I've just get, been getting older and older, like we all do, right? <laughs> In this 3D reality, this matrix, whatever you want to call it. We age. The illusion of aging. Look at that. Well, it's always so nice when I get told, you, you're 30, blah, blah, blah. You don't look that. You look like you're in your 20s. I'm like, oh, thank you, baby. Tell me that again. <laughs> Tell me I'm in my 20s. <laughs> right now, I'm so beaten up, guys. I'm full of bug bites, scratches, bruises. I do not. <laughs> I've been through war. <laughs> inside and out but I still stand by what I've said in the past we gotta fight for love however love is in your life fight and you know what <laughs> makes sense why I feel the way I do because I got Aries the god of war driven action and passion Aries is my seventh house of relationships, partnerships. I fight for love. I am a warrior as much as I'm a lover. I fight for love. And that includes love for myself. So any limiting beliefs that I have taken upon myself, it's this is the time. Work on your self-concept, Lucia. Work on your self-concept. I'm reclaiming my power. I can feel that with the Pluto energy as well. 
And I feel like this full moon in Capricorn is going to release major demons for me. I'm, I should get excited, but I'm scared at the same time. I feel that burning it all will be me starting you. And that can be scary. But I'm finally going to be the fool. Officially. <laughs> Taking and starting a new adventure. Taking a leap of faith into the unknown. And I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> doing it for me I want to be the best version of myself every day every day and I'll continue to fight for that fight and love because I'm a warrior I am divinity <laughs> a divine warrior or should I say I'm Lucy Divine because <laughs> that's the name I gave myself when I was playing Cupid Parasite. <laughs> hey, her name is Lynette Mirror. I go, now it's Lucy Divine. Thank you very much. Divine. Divinity. Yes. Goodness me. I hope I could continue to empower others. Through my own empowerment. My voice is my weapon of choice. <laughs> I'm not going to be stopped. Not even by me. Which has been a very big block. But it's okay. I just got to make friends with my shadow. Got to make friends with my inner child. Maybe not friends with my inner child, but to be there for her, nurture her, remind her it's going to be okay, that those things that happened in childhood are not going to happen again. You're closing it off. This is the time. This is the time. It's going to be amazing. Yes, of course, we're going from one Saturn ruled sign to another because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And traditionally, it also rules Aquarius. But I feel that I've been working really hard on myself, on my beliefs, how I continue to show compassion in my day to day life. I'm very proud of myself. I have grown so much as a human being. Even though I've gotten hurt, I have grown. And I know that because I've grown as an individual, I can help an even bigger, like a, a bigger amount of people. I, I'm very excited. Let's do a little reading. Let me put this down. I'm going to pull from my Oracle of the Roses. I just pulled some random things from the bags. And then I have here the secret language of color. Mm? Yes, we'll get from these two. To end this, I almost said this call, <laughs> this Empress Talks. All right, give me a moment. Let me get the cards. Wow. All right. Okay, I pulled two cards from the Roses deck. First one I pulled, the Architect, number five. Interesting. And then number ten, the Father. Beautiful. Okay, this is what I'm getting intuitively. Hmm. You're building. You're building. And the Father... This is this reminds me of Aries, the Emperor, the fourth arcana. 
The arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Yes, I know, I'm quoting Nick's avatar, Persona 3, Final Boss. I love Nick's. But I don't like what Nick's did to my Ryoji, <laughs> using him as a vessel. The harbinger of the fall. Oh, I love Ryoji so much. Death. Of course, I would love death. Anyway, um, my Scorpio moon's like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Death, sweet death. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I feel a little out of pocket. Sorry, guys. Back to being, back to the little mini reading. So with the architect and the father, you're building. You're building where you never thought you would build before. You are assuming the role of a leader. When I think. Oh, that's another thing I've learned. When I think of the emperor, I think of foundations, stability, the architect, but I also see a leader. Not everyone is ready to step into the role of a leader. Most people, and let me take a step back here before I say this. It takes a lot of courage to step into the role of leadership in any way that might be for you. Most people are just, they follow a crowd, they follow a way of life that others do instead of molding their own. And because we depend, others depend on such a um, way of life by following these set of rules set by others, and no, I don't mean complete anarchy. I've just, maybe there is something like, I've never, I don't, <laughs> I don't like being told what to do, but a lot of us don't, right? But I also don't like when, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Oh, I got to hold myself back here. Oh, I was getting, getting heated. Anyway, so with this, with these cards, for whoever this resonates with. I know it resonates with me. The architect, the builder. This architect is creating the new foundation. The father I see as the emperor. You are taking a leadership role. You are balancing your male and female divinity within self. And taking that power and making what you want with it for yourself finally. No one can take that away from you. Only if you allow them. It is yours. Your divinity. All right. Let me get from... Let's see if I can get some from here. Let me put the microphone down. Let's see what colors want to come through. Oh my gosh, how cute. The bottom of the deck is pink, let love in. All right. What cards want to come through, please? Strengthen your body with bronze. Okay, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. These two. Be spontaneous and have fun with tangerine. And, of course, we get pink officially. Okay, I'll repeat that. I didn't have the microphone next to my mouth. But, um, yeah, pink wanted to come through. And it's a very beautiful pink with the little tulips. Let love in. Very beautiful beautiful color we have that we also have tangerine be spontaneous and have fun let love in Ooh. okay okay and also the first one i pulled was bronze strengthen your body okay this looks like armor actually in the card like okay so right now the collective that is listening to this 
might be undergoing a time where you need to strengthen your body because you are stepping into this architect leader role because you'll be building an empire of your own. I know that that's what I want. I want to build my empire. <laughs> of course, an empress would want her empire. <laughs> Um, however that is for me and however that is for you, but I think it's so beautiful because tangerine is sacral chakra energy. I mean, well, the color anyway, like orange be spontaneous. So I feel that with these transits and with the eclipse season, like looming over us, oh my goodness, I can't wait to go back to my astro forecast. Oh, I have... I'm going to tell you guys, um, I wanted to do like, like a weather report kind of thing, like have me with the, the chart. I, I think I should do that. I want to do that. Oh, <laughs> and be like, what's in the astro forecast for today in the skies? <laughs> well, Pluto is still stationed retrograde and, <laughs> and Saturn is sextiling the da 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 da, da. <laughs> or is it squaring, squaring, I think he's, uh, Saturn is squaring Pluto. I gotta look, I haven't really checked. <laughs> Ooh, I got tickles <laughs> in my throat. I like, I, I, I've missed this part of me. It's really been so rough, guys. <laughs> it's been rough, but I'm strong. And uh, I'll deliver the same message again. Be the hope for the hopeless, because that can apply to anyone. It's your power, your strength. Mm. Your power your strength. I remember I made a little mantra. I've talked about it before. I've made videos about it before. I just don't remember, but I still... I am healed from head to toe, mountain tops to the earth's core. I am healed from head to toe, mountain tops to the earth's core. <laughs> My third eye is open. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> so, wow. I love that. Mm. Oh, guys, I feel like I'm going to really awaken to something really amazing. Oh, my goodness. Something beautiful is going to happen. I feel it. I've been going through such a rough time. But something beautiful is in the horizon. And that's for each and every one of you that have been feeling hopeless. You deserve the world. You deserve the best as well. I am healed from head to toe, mountain tops to the earth's core. I am healed from head to toe. Mountain tops to the earth's core. Mm. All right. And I'll end it here. So keep your chin up. Keep your spirits high. Everything is going to be all right. Love you, fam. Till the next one. Bye-bye.